Hello and welcome back to another Aftershot Pro tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at the curves. Now if you just launch you're going to be here in your standard panel. You got your histogram in the upper right and I've just chosen an image here. Let me uh, make it a little bit bigger. And it's just some trees and you can see that it's a bit foggy. This is actually up in a cloud. I was on a uh, ride. Or you could be on a hike. You could be anywhere. You get a little bit missed. You get a scene like this. Pretty basic stuff. Simple little composition little bit of light coming in and that's what kind of drew my attention that and the fog itself so if you go to the color panel and the curves are going to be here at the top now the curves have a an ability to change the overall mood of a scene and can change some specific aspects of the scene and so what we have is the very brightest parts of the scene here and the very darkest parts of the scene here and this is your histogram so this is something you're probably familiar with especially if you use a camera that shows the histogram on the screen and so you can see blacks are here whites are here and then here's everything in between and in this case you can see the color so this is the RGB which is all the colors if I switch that you can see just the reds just the blues you can see how that's slightly different see how the blues shifted a little bit here let me go back to the red so you can see the shift again and then RGB would be I'm going to look at and adjust everything. I typically, just from the viewpoint of I'm not as hardcore as some, just do adjustments with the RGB because I get results that overall I like that look fairly natural and that's kind of what I'm after. So let's just give, I'll give you an idea of what kinds of things that this can do. So again, as I've mentioned, the overall adjustment is from light to dark and then how it transitions between them. So what I'm going to do is bump up my exposure a little bit and you'll see here in the upper corner how the um, actual very brightest parts are a little bit are starting to grow. You see that little spike that occurs here? Now you also notice that all of this has adjusted over. As I've brightened up the scene, everything gets dragged over and is now a fuller, wider looking histogram. Now if you go back here, you'll notice that the darks haven't moved. You know, at all in terms of the expansion. Everything's just expanded to the bright and you look at the scene here that the scene is kind of a, a little washed out and, and again it's it looks a little bit more uh, misty and less contrast. The, the overall contrast of your scene is governed between the darkest point and the brightest point. So if I have a, a histogram that's really narrow that just goes up and down there's not much contrast. If I have a, if I have a histogram that's really wide I have more contrast and I will show you that next. So I've got my brights established here and if I hit W you can see these little blue that's actually blown out. Technically speaking there is um, more or less no detailed data in there. Hit W again and it's hard to tell because it's so tiny but it's there. So you have to be a little mindful that you're not blowing out things that are important. What I'm going to do now is take this middle arrow and I, this control, I'm going to click and drag it to the left. And you'll notice how the darks here start to get closer and closer to the edge. And you can see if I go all the way to the edge, now look at the scene. Look how different it looks. We've got a much more contrasty scene. And so for a look, if this is the look you're after, you know, you need to have more contrast. You need to then make sure your histogram spans a wider breadth here. If you don't like this, if this is not like the scene that you had in mind, you can obviously drag this the other direction and you can go all the way like this. And the nice thing here is you'll notice that as I'm dragging it, I mean the, the image is looking pretty horrible, but as I'm dragging this over, this is getting narrower, which means less contrast, but this has not inc in increased. I have not blown out more of the scene. If I hit W again, it's still just these little guys here because this is your ultimate bright point as opposed to this which is all the stuff in the middle so you can you can kind of play with this if you see me swing this back and forth the actual brights change very slightly you see that right so I'm gonna hit reset here and what I'm gonna do is show you how the this is the more traditional curve as you've probably heard it described which real common for people to talk about S curves and what they what they mean by that if you're if you're unfamiliar is that this line here if I click in the middle and create a sort of an access point 
it's a little bit hard to see, but it's right here. I've, I can now drag this up and watch what happens down in this section simultaneously. If I drag this up here, this gets dragged down slightly, and then if you look at the scene, it's got a little more contrast in it than it did before, though not nearly as much as dragging this over. Let me reset it and you can see. So I'm going to click. See how the scene looks pretty washed out? Again, it looks pretty misty. It was very foggy. I'm going to drag this up. And so now my brights all here get much more sort of enhanced. And then down here, these it, you can't see it because it's behind, but essentially these are getting subdued a bit. So what that does is it changes the transition from the bright areas to the dark areas and sort of makes them more severe, which can, again looks more contrasty. And you can see that here in the scene here. If you look down in these areas and in these areas here, it looks quite a bit, uh, has more shape to it. I'm going to undo that again so you can see. So this is a little more washed out. And then I'm going to jack this up. I'm going to go more severe here, be like a bit crazy right there. And you can see this is much darker. And then in this middle area, in the bright area, it's like very bright. And what I'm going to do here, because this is, I'm going to hit W. But again, you can see just the little bits that are blown out. But let me grab my highlights and drag those down until it gets rid of some of those. And then I'm going to lower the exposure just a touch. So I'm trying to get rid of some of these so that it's not so severe. And then you can see how the overall scene changes. Uh, watch how the histogram here changes as I lower the exposure even more. See how it's dragging everything left? And then I'm getting closer and closer to the black point. If I go back to the panel, you can see it better. So now everything is jammed over here to the left, although my curve has been it re has uh, remained. So this was my first adjustment that I made. Now all I've done is made the exposure adjustment. I haven't touched this guy in the middle. I've just done overall scene exposure, and now this is what my image looks like. So you can see that it's such a, a very different look based on adding this curve, this S-curve, and then playing with the exposure. I mean, those are the only two adjustments I did, and I've, I've got a scene that looks like this now, which is much more dramatic. If I hit reset, you can then see the original again. It's more washed out. This is sort of a raw file in the mist, lower contrast, right? Pretty common. So now I'm going to do one last little thing here. We're still in the color panel and in the curves. And so what I'm going to do is drag this guy down. It's another little adjustment you do. And this is your bright point. You see everything gets a little bit brighter. But again, only those little bits are blown out. I'm not too worried about that. It doesn't matter to me. And then I'm just going to drag this guy down all the way to the black point. So now I have bright point, black point is pretty black, this is pretty white, and then now what you can do with the curve, you don't just have to do S-curve, you can also do things like this. And so now I've brought, brought everything up, and you can see the whole scene has gotten brighter, even though my black point is still here, I still have, if you look in the very dark areas, it's still pretty dark down there. And then so that's even a third way that your scene can look. Okay pretty pretty neat tool because you can do so much with just making these adjustments. Now I'm going to reset this and we're going to do one more thing. So what I'm going to do is run the exposure up again like we had previously right to about there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this guy I know I'm throwing a lot at you. I'm going to grab this guy and I'm going to raise it up. And you'll notice that the, the black point is moving in a little bit as I do that and it's it's a uh, uh, slowly moving in and that's reducing contrast. Remember that if this is narrower between the black point and the bright point we have less contrast. So I'm going to say right there. So see the, the gap here? I've, I've lifted it up. Now what hap watch what happens when I drag this down. See how this doesn't move very much? But everything in between here and here is being dragged to the left in this case to the darkers, darker area and you'll see the scene changes to a, a yet again. So now this it's a bit of a, a slightly darker scene. The, 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 high, the very brightest are still there. If I hit W, you can still see them. Here they are. But my dark point, instead of being all the way to the edge at the very blacks, is now somewhere up here at some percentage of black. Right? I don't know. It's some kind of a dark gray as opposed to black itself. And you, know, you get down in there, you can see some detail in there. 
So this gives you the ability to change the mood of the scene and keep it softer if you want something. This is pretty common in woodland photography is you don't want the highest contrast. A lot of guys want to have sort of a middle contrast scene. It creates a bit of a softness to it. And so this is a good way to do that is by dragging this stuff around and, and watch what happens when I move this down again. It's going to pull the blacks over and it's going to change the scene. So keep your eye on the actual end image as I pull this down here. So you can see how this scene looks here. You know, it's quite pleasing as well, but it may not be what you're looking for. If I drag this up, and you can go bananas. I'll go, I'll go real high just to show you the difference. So everything gets a little bit more washed out, and again, we're losing contrast because the, the width here has is, is been reduced. And our black point's way up here, and so the very blackest parts of the scene aren't all that black, right? If I drag this back down, the blackest parts of the scene are a little bit darker, a little more natural in my opinion. Um, but again, it's, it all comes down to if you want natural or if you want, you know, if you're doing a more artistic thing. And that's what beauty about doing photography is it's up to the up to the look that you are after. And so by playing with uh, the black points, I'm going to hit reset. By playing with the sliders here, you can adjust from high contrast, <coughs> excuse me, high contrast, you know, very dark and moody. I mean, look at that. That's kind of cool looking, right? I like that. Or you can drag it the other way and do more of a high key look and then you can play with your curve and drag this around you, you know you can go you can go either direction you can go different amounts and with uh, you can actually add other uh, points to it and then that way it changes the pivot points you can see here I've actually done a curve with I mean this is horrible but you can see that by clicking again I've added a different um, point right so it creates a whole different look and then drag this around so you can get pretty bizarre stuff going on and you can see the different points because the the curve has been anchored as 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 I've wanted to with the various uh, uh, options versus just a simple s curve as we demonstrated before so you know simple just grab and move is one option the s curve is a pretty basic uh, landscape photography kind of curve. I suppose it is for others as well. You can drag that around. Right? Or again you can create multiple points and then you can fart around with something, you know, uh, more intense, more more interesting. So anyway, that is showing you the curves tool. And I won't get into the others I'll probably do a separate video, so this one doesn't run too long, that has to do with the um, actual individual color adjustments. So uh, anyway, thanks for watching this Corel Aftershot Pro tutorial on using curves adjustment for your images.